Hello all of you fishies out there. I'm Danny, Jesus is behind the camera, and this is Bull Shark Bait Arts. Today, we're going to show you guys how to make some bloody makeup. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be gory. It's going to be a good series that we're starting called Blood, Guts, and Gore. So, this is part one of Blood, Guts, and Gore. So, if you're the faint of heart, if you have any kind of phobias, please go see one of my other videos. I don't want anybody to pass out, so please. And then I just got back from work, so I'm just so excited to show you guys this video because I feel like I'm improving each time. It's really exciting. I love horror, so this is a video I really want to show you guys. So stay tuned. And enjoy the show. All right, this marks part one of our blood, guts, and gore makeup. So, yep, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make like scars and crazy weird skin stuff, just nasty, you know, as it says, the bloods, guts, and gore. So, just crazy nasty makeup effects. So we're going to start off by our items that we need today. So we have our tablecloth to make sure nothing gets spilled. We have our handy dandy mat, which we are going to work on top of as usual. And then we're going to have some set of makeup this is just like hypoallergenic stuff or like FDA approved whatnot. Um, it's a water based paint. Yeah, it's uh, paraben free. Yeah, non toxic, water based. So it's good. It's clean, safe paint. And we need our paint brushes as usual. Just a variety. Paint brushes, small and large. So that way, when we are painting or doing our makeup, it's easier. Then various makeups. Um, I've got some browns that are eyebrow marker and then some reds for like the scarring and stuff. So just basic. Um, and just like, I think it's like an eyeshadow palette or something. I've used it like on my eyebrows even. So it's just a palette of makeup, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then you want your blood. And anytime you're working with blood or anything that's red based, make sure you're wearing garbage clothing or something black. It can stain. It usually does. So make sure you're safe. And then we've got our little foundations. So that way we can blend in whatever we're doing, you know. Our liquid latex for making the skin or making the scars, like raising the skin up and stuff like that. You've got your application sponges for applying the makeup and then you also have your rigid collodion which I've only got a small bottle right now because it's like almost eight bucks for just a tiny bottle and the bigger bottles are way more expensive it's not cheap if you can find it somewhere cheaper let me know please because I need more obviously, but I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on it. I found it on Amazon and it wasn't cheap. And then like petroleum jelly or Vaseline or something. So if you don't want it to, you know, stick on your skin, depending on what you're doing, um, this, I mean, I've put the latex on without anything and it's perfectly fine. But of course, Warning, if you're allergic to latex, don't do this. Um, although, 
there is an alternative now where you can um, use like silicone. So now they have silicone that is very skin safe. So in case you want to do that. So uh, I guess we'll start then. Um, like I said, blood, guts, and gore. So we're just going to do random stuff. So we got the rigid collodion, which is good for scarring. Uh, it tightens your skin. So pretty much, I've already got a scar here, so you can just lay it over that so you can make it look like it's fresh again. And you just do it one layer at a time. You can already feel it. It tightens the skin, so it will make that skin tighten and it will kind of sink down. Um, and then, yeah, you just do one little layer at a time. Yep. It's already drying. And yeah, it's almost like nail polish, so... I mean, it's a nail polish applicator, so... Yeah. And then... Of course, rigid collodion, you want to be careful if you're putting it on any hair. That, they do sell like a product, there's one company that sells a product that cleans it off, but you can also use um, nail polish remover, that works too, or it'll peel off eventually, it doesn't stay very long, um, you can see that, yeah, it doesn't stay very long, so it's no big deal, we're letting that dry. You can kind of see it trying to show it off. You see it's starting to sink. Ooh, and I'm knocking it over. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Yeah, if you can see, it's already starting to sink in. If you turn it like that, it almost looks real. Except it's a little shiny. And that's where makeup comes in. And I'm <laughs> not aligning with the camera, so. You can see it when you turn, it looks deeper. And then it's dry. Then you start your next layer. Again, it's just like nail polish. So you're literally just applying nail polish to the skin. Mm hmm Trying to see if the camera will focus. Maybe. Maybe. But you can kind of see that now. Yeah, just keep layering it. And of course, it takes a few layers. And you can obviously design your scar any way you want. Doesn't have to be the same as mine. Or anybody else's, for that matter. As you can see, it is working. It looks better when you kind of change your arm a different way. That way you can see it's starting to sink down. Not as noticeable when it's up, but when you turn your arm, you can see it better. But I guess it depends on what you're doing. Also, I'm only just beginning to put the layers on, so it will continue to dip down. We're just doing a basic scar right now. And then we'll do nastier stuff because we can always add on to this one since the rigid collodion's already on there. So we'll add on to it. We'll put the latex over it so we can have the skin kind of peeling back. Because we don't want just a scar. We want a fresh open wound because this is supposed to be a blood, guts, and gore tutorial. See, see me turning my arm like that. You can see that dip. 
better, at least. It's harder to see when um, it's just laying flat. Like, even no matter the angle, it's harder to see unless it's turned. It is uncomfortable, but you can see that clear dip. Now I'm trying not to get in the camera's way. And yes, this this stuff you definitely want to keep your little nail polish applicator clean because it had a film on there, so now it's a little better. But yeah, once that dries, so always keep it closed. Yeah, as soon as it dries, you're done. It is no good anymore after that. And you can feel it because it tightens the skin. So you can feel it, definitely. And it is flammable, so no lighters, no, no going near any fires or anything while you're cosplaying or dressing up or maybe you're making like a little video or a movie, so. Just stay away from fire. Definitely don't ingest it. I wouldn't recommend inhaling it. So usually when you're working with different materials, I would definitely recommend working with a fan on, with their windows open, or with the door open if you have a screen door so you can start to see that. Now you can start to see it definitely, even without that turning. You can see that dip in there. That looks really cool. And then if you turn it, it looks even more. So yeah, now we're getting a good scar in there. So we can start to add in makeup. Makeup. So. As you can see, now it definitely looks good, even if you turn it. If you don't turn it, if you turn it, it looks a lot deeper. It looks like a good gash. So we are going to color that in a little bit. So take your pen and you can kind of color in the inside. So we want a fresh wound. Or use your blending tool if you don't. I'm always prone. I love to use my <laughs> just my hands when I'm working with stuff. But obviously, it's usually better. Okay, so now it's not quite a fresh wound. It's like starting the heal wound. Like seeing a little bit of deep skin in there kind of got a little bit of skin so we're starting to get there okay I guess we are <laughs> just kind of doing a not so fresh wound not the freshest wound. I didn't really plan that out at first, but you know, we'll start in phases, but we'll go from it's like almost healed to starting to be like a little less healed, a little less healed. So. You got that, it looks like we've got that skin underneath. 
cut through a couple layers of skin. It's starting to scab just barely. I've got kind of a dark shadow around the edge, so it got scraped too. Got a little scraped. Now, you're gonna start to go fresher. That's where the blood comes in. The fun part. The part everybody loves, or maybe they don't love. I guess it depends on if you have a phobia or not. Okay, so looks kind of dark. I'm going to darken it up just a little bit with our makeup. I apologize if I move sometimes and get a little off camera. Okay, that definitely, it looks like it's healed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where we're going here. <laughs> now it does look like it's healing up. <laughs> so we're going forwards, we're going backwards. Now apparently we went from a slightly fresh wound to a more healed wound. So we can start getting that beautiful scar. So now it is just a cut. Now we'll go back to it being fresher. So we're kind of... Now that skin looks pretty raw. I'm going to go back in with that pink We want a fresh wound. That's what everybody wants. Blood, guts, and gore. Fresh, super fresh. Okay, we're getting back to the spot that we want to be at. It almost feels real, you know? When you put it on your skin, you'd almost believe it. Okay, so. We've got it open a little bit. I'm trying to make it look fresh. I'm trying to wipe off some of that excess. Maybe you scraped your arm on something, so apparently I have gray on my little sponge. I have a little bit of gray, so Let's say you just got your wound. I'm trying to look make it look as fresh and ready as possible. Which sounds so weird when you say it aloud. Almost got some bruising in there apparently. I don't know what we got scraped on, but it's got a bruise. Because, you know, it's supposed to be fresh instead of got a little bit of bruising starting. So we're just jumping around to where the wound was. It's not quite fresh because there's some bruising. The bruising has started to form. Hmm. <laughs> and then, when we want it fresh, that's where we come in with the blood. And that's going to be very messy. Because we know fake blood is messy. This is why <laughs> we have all this stuff here. Ooh. Oh, thankfully it has a little hole. So, 
we're gonna go in make that wound kind of fresh so coming in with that blood you can't even see the scar anymore but it looks pretty real great way Halloween will be right around the corner scare your friends <laughs> or maybe you want to prank somebody it's it's a fresh cut you just got cut you bleeding it's gonna make a mess everywhere <laughs> of course Ooh, <laughs> it's dripping I still don't have paper towels oh look at that it looks fantastic it does look very real okay so now you just and blood doesn't stain that much but you're trying to wipe it up good effects you're you're holding your wound you have blood on your towel or something you're cleaning it up it still looks doesn't quite look like it just happened but I need darker red for that but you can add on that little bit of extra blood say it's like starting to stop starting to coagulate on the top if you want to make it look see that's a little fresher been bleeding you're trying to wipe it up you can see that skin underneath that skin it's all gnarly see those layers but you still have a little bit of blood leaking out because you know whenever your wound is healing and you've been pressing on it dabbing on it holding a paper towel onto it you always get those little extra bits that are kind of still oozing up so you've got that freshness and then we can try. I've got the costume makeup. Alrighty, so looks like our blood is starting to dry up. I've got my cup of water and a smaller paintbrush. Pretty much anytime you're doing this makeup, when you're working with makeup, you are just, it's all blending. It is all blending. You just have to mix those colors together. And really, you just gotta practice and try it out. See what goes well. Not quite realistic enough yet, but we will get there. I had black at one point. I don't know what happened to it. I'm going to have to order more makeup, but we can add in other colors. dabbing, trying to get that excess water off of there. We really just want to make a nasty wound. We just want it to be gross. That's all we care about. Now you have very colorful blood. <laughs> if you bled in pink. <laughs> yep. But that's where you kind of have to blend in those darker colors. I 
I don't know how well those will work together. But we're just testing something out and showing you how it works. Okay, so it is not super dark and I do not have my black. But you can use other colors to darken it. It looks very odd at the moment. But that's where the latex comes in. Now we bring in the latex and we layer it up around our wound because despite it looking a little light colored, we are going to make it look like it's pretty deep. This is where lovely latex comes in and it is gnarly so watch out keep your paper towels and your napkins close because this stuff is just nasty okay so we've got our makeup we're gonna put those off to the side make sure you close it up we got our wound waiting it's waiting for us. I don't think a real wound would, obviously, but you know, we're having fun. You want a paintbrush. I've used this paintbrush with the latex before, so you want a paintbrush you don't really care about because the latex will ruin your paintbrushes. It's leaking in. It's trying to leak into my wound. So, latex. It's kind of wet at first. You're just going around that scarring tissue. I'm blending it back a little bit because it will get thicker as we get in closer. So pretty much you just do one layer at a time and then you have to let it dry. So takes a little bit. I've got my fan going. It helps to uh, put your wound in front of the fan. So this is just going to make your skin super tight. So be aware. And then if you want, don't forget your petroleum jelly or your Vaseline and put it on beforehand. Um, I can kind of give you a demonstration. So that's none. This is, we're putting the Vaseline on. So we've got the Vaseline on there, and then again, you paint over it. It'll just take a little longer to dry because it's not it's sitting on top of something else. So it takes a second to dry because it's only drying from the top layer. And then this one's almost done drying, so we can start adding another layer around here too. And it wipes off super easy. So if you get it in your wound, it can be wiped off. Woohoo. It'll start to look more real. It almost does already because it's dark. But we will keep adding to it. And I don't have my 
black anymore for some reason. But what I do have is my purple, so you could use that, or you can even use green, because contrasting colors make other colors darker. So you can use your purple to give it more of a dark tone, or use your green to make it darker as well. And you can even, if you have something like this, you can use the lid or get a paint palette or something. These are really good because you just add water and they come back to life. See, so it starts to darken it, makes it look more natural. See, now it's starting to look less fake, more natural. As you can see, the uh, petroleum jelly Vaseline is almost dry, but obviously you can tell it's taken a little longer to dry. And you can put the darker on the edges. Because the inside of the wound is going to be a little lighter because it's fresher and closer to the muscle. So I'm adding in a little bit of lighter colored mixing in with that darker color again. Take away that bright tone. So again, we've got a much fresher wound. It's a fresher looking rune, wound. <laughs> yep, stumbling over myself. So now that we got the inside looking more natural, and it's pretty much dry, we can ooh, put another layer. And I dipped that in too much. Whoa. It did not drip in our cut though, so that's fantastic. As you can tell, it takes a while. It's just layering. Lots, lots of layering. Okay, I, I don't know. I'm either gonna speed this video up or I will skip. Hmm. I'm going to try to speed it up, I think. So yeah, I'm going to speed it up. We're going to just start adding on the layers. We're just going to get smaller and build up more as you go. And just more towards the middle. Just keep building up. And I will demonstrate. Oh, my skin's super tight now, so it's to be expected. If you're working with latex and or silicone. All right, we're starting to build up layers. Look at that, it's starting to get gnarly. It's starting to get a very gnarly looking wound. That Vaseline is kind of like soaked into that latex I put on, so if you have light skin, it kind of blends in 
can kind of look like you're peeling. Maybe you want a peeling effect. You're peeling off layers of skin. That's another thing too. It almost looks real. So you're peeling away. Maybe it was like a healed burn. So you're peeling off that dead skin. It's nasty. It's a good effect. And that spot is all clear. And that's the part we put that petroleum jelly on. So we are having that layered up for the other part, that latex. I put on a, a couple extra layers. At this point, we've been layering it, so we're just putting the thicker parts. You're just gonna continue to add up closer to the actual scar. And on another video, I'll show you how to do like a bigger wound or something. Maybe we'll do like, if you got your throat cut or something, something crazy, nasty and wild where we can do like a deeper cut. See, it's looking more natural. It looks like it could bleed at any moment. It's fresh, raw. There's blood right there, skin what not then we'll kind of cover up that extra with the makeup afterwards but yeah it's just layering letting it dry so I decided not to speed up the video and to just you know skip out some parts that where it's just drying forever because it takes quite a bit of time so as long as you leave it alone you're good so Definitely, if you're doing this for cosplay, I would recommend giving yourself lots of time before a con or your event, giving yourself a couple hours to get it ready before wherever you're going instead. Or having some pieces ready and then using some extra latex to glue them on in place that works too but still you still need a couple like at least an hour which is probably cutting it close so you want maybe a little bit more than that maybe two hours before whatever you're doing to get ready if you have that extra piece already made which I will explain more about that in another video because now we gotta get rid of that dead skin. <laughs> Another video coming up sooner or later. I will be showing you a piece of latex that has already been made that I just peeled off. And I'm going to reuse, which is a fun one too. It's just a very, very long video. It's probably something I'm gonna end up live streaming or something. Or... I don't know, film it all in one piece possibly and just break it up into parts because it's going to be a long one. It's going to be a couple hours, so. And then I have a couple friends who are going to be my models, so they've agreed to model some of my work. So that will be next. Well, not, I don't know. <laughs> it will be coming up around like next time, sometime soon. Um, so yeah, that's, you can see it. Ooh. It looks really nasty right now. You can see. Trying to zoom in a little bit. Or zoom out. See, it almost looks like fresh and ready to bleed, but... It's also looking very white, but we're about there. And then I'll show you something that's a little bigger. 
in the future. Then we'll cover this up. I'll explain that and we'll add in more blood. All right, now we have our nasty looking wound. It's gross. The skin looks like it's all messed up. So we are going to start making it look like a wound. Got my little applicators and everything. This one actually comes with it. And when getting stuff, you want to try to match your skin tone. So, I've got a lighter color for the lighter part of my skin. Of course, that excess. Whoa, I'm knocking stuff down. Uh, we're just blending a little bit. We're gonna keep adding layers and whatnot. Hey. <laughs> I had to grab it. I dropped the makeup and the darker stuff. I'm still kind of new to foundation, so. Now it looks lovely and gross, <laughs> but obviously that's the goal. Now you have to let it dry a little bit because we are going to blend it more by adding in those dark colors so it looks like it's all bruised up and even nastier. Because we just got a big wound or, I mean, it's not super big, but it's relatively big. Okay, let it dry for a bit. Again, that's where the fan can come in handy. That's where we also have this palette. So, a little bit of that bruising. We have that purplish color. This is a fresh wound. Okay, we're gonna get a bigger brush. This is a brand new wound. And I prefer to use 
face makeup when doing this kind of stuff because it kind of looks it blends better and it looks a little bit more realistic versus like some like a body paint a lot of people like to use body paint but I prefer to use face makeup it's feels to me a lot more believable than trying to make paint seem realistic all right now we got that nasty get down yelling at my cat she's trying to she wants to be in the video so now you just got this big nasty wound you still have some more blending to do get that darker color towards that inside so we're also going to have to add more stuff. Now, you're starting to get this just grotesque. You just, it looks like you got skinned. You hit something really hard, maybe like a piece of metal or some object scraped you real bad. You're all scraped up. It's gnarly. Gotta get more of that red in there. Or reddish color. It's gnarly. You just got really badly bruised. And you also got a huge cut on your arm. Trying to show it off a little better. And I actually peeled off a little bit of this so normally it would blend a little better but if you mess with it too much like I have so I was trying to get off that other piece it starts to come up but even if it starts to peel up like that you can still make it believable you got really badly messed up. This is a bad wound. This is pretty nasty. This is like, if you don't clean that wound right now, it's going to get infected. So we'll do that next too. We can go from the stages. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go back in with that makeup. I'm going to redden it up. So we're ready to add in that blood. So we start our stages of nasty nastiness because that's the best look oh looks lovely doesn't it totally lovely totally nasty the best kind of blood guts and gore it's the nasty kind <laughs> and then again just add that water that old stuff we're adding in that lighter color. We also need to make it a little darker too. So get that green in there. Don't forget that green. Make it dark. All right, so now it's starting to look very, you can see that inside. You can see it. Trying to dull it down a little bit. Got a little bit of peeling up. Your skin is coming up. It's peeling outward. Mm -hmm. Trying to give you all the different shots because the camera, of course.
Okay, and then probably add in a little bit more of that red. Or it looks more pink. So you got your gnarly fresh wound. Now we are adding in that blood. And you want it to look a little realistic, so you're going to add, it's leaking out made a mess. Maybe it's smeared a little bit because you got scraped. So it's smeared because you got scraped like that. You can see where it's pooling in the center. So you got that fresh blood. It's leaking down. Talk about blood, guts, and gore. You got a nasty, just bruised up it's already started bruising because you, you hit it really good. It is a messy wound. You can see that fresh blood coming out of that little spot. It's fresh. It is everywhere. You see why you gotta wear black and stuff? I'm getting blood everywhere. It's leaking. My arm is bleeding. <laughs> it's great. It's great. I'm gonna have to stop, probably like, get my thumbnail right here. All right, now you got your nasty wound. We added some blood into it. So it is gross, it is dripping, it is a messy wound. See that fresh blood in there? It just kind of poured out. So, can add in some extra. Again, maybe got smeared a little bit on the side. It got smeared. It's all gnarly. So, and in the pictures, took some pictures. I'm going to post them on my Instagram. They look really good too. So, it's dripping everywhere. Again, we're black. <laughs> it's messy. Or wear something that doesn't matter. Now we're we're trying to clean up. You just you gotta clean up that blood. You gotta get the blood to stop. Get that blood to stop flowing. It is hard to see where the right camera angle is. So you're trying to dab up your blood. Ooh, you're trying to hold it in place because it is gnarly. What is that? Does that look like <laughs> bone? <laughs> it kind of does. <laughs> Let's hope not. Ooh, it's pretty gnarly. But, you know, if that kind of looks like bone, ooh, even better. Or maybe it's like pussy. Disgusting. This blood, guts, and gore, man. That's the goal. We want it to be nasty. Want to add in some of that green. You can add in that green to make it look more infected. See, it's trying to heal, but it's really, you are just infected. Maybe you're turning into a zombie. Ooh, ow, that actually kind of hurts. <laughs> so, ooh, you see that? That kind of looks like bone. Maybe the bone is coming out. It is just this nasty, infected mess, and yep, you don't want to be a part of that. But maybe you do. Maybe your project, you need 
to be infected. You want to be infected, and diseased, and gross, and it is just this gnarly thing. Just gnarly, messy, zombie attack wound. Now it's more of like a zombie attack, yeah. It's infected. See that bits of green in there? Of course it's not green face makeup, so I'll have to do that another time. We're adding in that green. So now it's just this nasty infected wound. Like I don't know what happened to you. Must have gotten bit by a zombie. Must have. That's what I'm thinking. Thinking there are zombies involved. Only way. And again, you're just playing around. You're just trying stuff out. You're just trying different stuff. Trying to see what works. It's all about trial and error and you have to have fun with it. So now we got this nasty infected wound and it's just gross. So we went from like a scar to a fresh bleeding wound to like a healed wound and and then a even crazier fresher wound and now this nasty infected thing maybe you're like you're oozing more blood <laughs> blood <laughs> I'm having fun with this blood so this nasty infected wound it's bleeding maybe not too bad but it's still bleeding it's pretty nasty <laughs> if you could see it right it almost looks like bite marks so you got bit by a zombie it's a zombie bite wound now and you are getting infected you are going to be turned into a zombie it is not going to be fun and you're going to be eating other people so showing the different angles and actually I've been messing with that area so much it's starting to hurt so you would almost believe that you were infected but no no zombies here today because zombies that would be scary <laughs> I have a weird phobia of zombie attacks when I watch zombie movies I get paranoid and I start to wonder, like, am I the only person here? Because right now, I'm living in, like, middle of nowhere in Oregon. And when nobody's around, it's, it's easy to believe. <laughs> so now it's like, ugh, it's like there was a doctor here or something. Or there needs to be a doctor here. Because look at, there's just like bloody tissues everywhere. Blood. We have to wipe up the evidence. There's blood everywhere. Oh my gosh, there's just blood. So much blood. Can you believe it? So much blood. It's lovely. Blood, guts, and gore. Now we're wiping that away. Look at that. When you wipe it away, you can see that wound though comes out. But it almost looks like bone at that point, which makes it even nastier, which my arm is really hurting. It's tired. I've been doing this for a couple hours now, so let's see. Can we focus? Let's focus. Oh, we're going to focus out. So that way, you can see. See that nastiness. It's nasty. It almost looks like bone. Yeah. some bone in there too which that will be one of the other blood guts and gore makeups is bones so I think that's pretty much it for this one we are just gonna have to clean up let's see 
This may or may not come off in a whole piece. I think it is. So, I mean, maybe beforehand you clean it off. So, we got our not paper towels and just wipe it down. Wipe off that blood, that guts, that gore, that nastiness. Cleaning off that wound. Still got some in the middle. Might stay there. I don't know. But we got it. Now, time to peel it off. Ah. Okay. Again. <laughs> I would recommend using Vaseline. It's not that it hurts the skin, it hurts the hair. It hurts when it pulls off of your hair. Because it you're basically gluing your hair in place, which that didn't feel super lovely. Now you're left with the scar and you have that extra piece of skin if you want to keep it. <laughs> Which is the nastiest thing I'll ever think that I have said. Look at the back is so... Ooh, the back of this thing is weird. got imprints and then the front so this is just like skin now skin leftover skin if you want to keep that skin as a souvenir or you can reuse it Ooh, I just hit the camera oh man but yeah maybe you want to keep your skin Let's see you gotta focus the camera ended up taking a picture Woo, I ended up taking a picture. Camera doesn't want to focus right. Yep. Now it looks like this just nasty piece of skin there. Uh, this camera, this is not a video camera, so it doesn't focus well. Oh yeah, it's gross. It's pretty nasty. Yep. And plus, I don't know how to fix up the settings. Eventually, yes, Jesus is behind the camera. He will always be behind the camera. But I definitely need somebody to help man the camera in the future. I have a friend, but he's a photographer, not really a videographer. So, we'll see. There's that nasty piece of skin. You can save it for your next projects. Then you got this. Which, again, you can just peel it right off. But, it does pull hair, you have this nasty scar, and yeah, it just pulls right off. Now you're left with that excess makeup, <laughs> just a bare spot. You're left with that little bit of makeup left, you just wash it off, soap and water. Soap and water, then you're good. That's pretty much it. This is the first part of the blood guts and gore thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed I hope you liked it I hope the video was good I enjoyed it that's for sure and I'm excited to do more in the future so this has been part one of blood guts and gore as always I'm Danny Jesus is behind the camera and this is bull shark bait arts so fishies Make sure, if you enjoyed this video, slap that like button with your fins. Also, if you want to see more content from me in the future, please subscribe. I look forward to seeing all the fishies in the sea in the future. All the sharks, all the orcas, all the other marine animals. It would be exciting. So, make sure to sub subscribe. <laughs> make sure to subscribe and like, because I'm a dork, and you know you want to see me. <laughs> So, as always, we'll see you guys soon. You fishies have a good day. Be blessed. And we'll see you next time.